In this session, we're going to start by locating an element in the shadow dome without using Selenium Find Element Method. I am going to use the same book application from our introduction and find this search field. Inspect. We are not able to locate this search field from the Elements tab because the search field is in a shadow dome. Do you see how the ID attribute has a value of input? If this were in the original dome, we could use XPath or CSS selector to find this element. For CSS selector, start with the tag name input, then ID and the value input did not find it. Remove the input tag and still no success. For XPath, we write two forward slashes, input, two brackets, at ID equal two single quotes with input inside the quotes. And once again, we're not able to find the search field. In our diagram, the search field would be an element in the first shadow dome. Now, let's write our code to find the search field. The setup method is pre-written for Chrome and it loads the book application. The teardown method is coming out to quit the driver. Our method is at test. Make sure it go to test ng. Yes, at test public void find shadow dome without selenium find element. We have three steps to find an element in the shadow dome. First, we provide access by typing and spelling not going good so far. Provide access so the driver can execute JavaScript. Second is to execute JavaScript to return a web element. Third, we perform an action on the web element. There it is. JavaScript executor is an interface with JS executor as the reference. JavaScript executor indicates that a driver can execute JavaScript, providing access to the mechanism. So we convert to JavaScript executor from the driver. At this point, the driver has access to execute JavaScript. Now that we have access, the JS executor will execute the script. The execute script method executes JavaScript. I want you to notice two things in this IntelliSense. Number one, within the script, we use document to refer to the current document. And number two, if the script has a return value, then the following steps will be taken. Our test would return an HTML element. So, this method returns a web element. To sum up the information from IntelliSense, our execute script method will return a web element and use document. Since the script returns a web element, we cast web element, then assign it to web element with the name like book search field. Let me bring this line to the next line so we can have it all on one page. To complete this script, 
we need the path from JavaScript. Go back to our AUT, and I'm gonna show you two more ways for finding this path. But for now, let's just keep it simple, and we right click, select copy, copy JS path. <laughs> That's it. Go back to our code and paste the script. It's kind of like cheating a little bit, but this is the path for our book search field and the script returns a web element. Document represents our web page. Query selector allows us to find the book app element using CSS selector. Shadow root is a property representing the shadow root element. Finally, we have the query selector to find the search field element using CSS selector, hashtag input. Last step is to perform an action on the web element by writing book search field dot send keys. And the keys we send is shadow dome without find element. Let's run. Bingo. In the search field, we see shadow dome without find element. That's it. And thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next session where we talk about locating the element using Selenium Find Elements method. And thanks for watching. All Part 1 ebooks and PDF documents are free. Programming books for UFT. Programming books for Java. Here's the Selenium Automation Book. And TestNG. Subscribe to get notification of future videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.